All right, guys, script training. Today's Wednesday, August 17th. Thank you for showing up today. This is our chance to yes, drop our skills, role play, practice, uh, and get better. So uh, first of all, before we get started, just give yourself a round of applause for showing up and trying to better your skills today, right? Showing up is the first part, right? Showing up and saying, hey guys, I'm making time in my business to come show up today because I know that the more that I learn my scripts, the better I'm able to communicate with people, the better I'm gonna be at closing business, converting deals, booking appointments, and that's gonna be the difference maker, right? So I really just wanna reiterate that each time you show up, you are practicing, you are putting in that rep. It's like going to the gym, right? If you're trying to get better on the squat, or the bench press, every time you show up and squat and bench press, you're getting a little bit better, a little bit better. You're getting it down a little bit smoother. You're getting the form down, right? You're getting the strength, the little muscle fibers in your body are starting to get a little bit stronger and you're building this foundation. Um, and that's how you get better, right? The same thing goes if you don't go to the gym for a long time and then you just try to show up, you're rusty, right? You're not as strong as you were because you haven't you know, done the squat. So it's also repetition, memory, muscle memory, and stuff like that, right? I'm using the gym analogy for any of you guys that go to the gym, but it's with anything, right? It's like riding a bike too. If you don't ride a bike for a long time, you're not just going to jump on the bike and start, you know, being as good as you were when you used to ride every day. So that's the importance of script training. So um, I want to put it out there. Um, I got some stuff I want to go over, but is there anything that came up for you this week? Uh, any objection? Anything that has to do with dialogue? Is there any sort of part of the conversation of talking to clients that you are getting stuck on? Um, any objection that someone said where they, they got you and you were like, oh, I, I didn't really know what to say in that circumstance or I don't think I answered that correctly. Can you maybe put that in the chat or who, or if you wanna raise your hand and just unmute yourself and also tell us. Well, um... Go ahead, Alessandra. We'll, we'll do ladies first. Go ahead, Alessandra. Um, so about the market, just I have a client that he's just not realistic with the price at all. And then he keeps on telling me, well, oh, it's because interest rates, the beds are going to rise, the interest rates, the interest rates, and, uh, and then the homes are going to go down. And what I tell him is like, it's just the, the market, the homes are just going to appreciate slower. It's not that they're going down. But he's, I don't know what else to tell. Got it. So if I'm understanding it correctly, you have a client who thinks the market's going to go down, it's going to crash because of the interest rates, or maybe the prices are going to drop. Um, yeah. And you're not sure, you're telling him, no, it's going to, you know, it might slow down, but it's not going to drop. And you're trying to figure out how to have that conversation. Raise your hand, guys, if you guys have had that issue too, where you talk to clients and they're just, their expectations are not realistic for what's actually happening. Okay, so let's walk through that because that's a this is a really good one, right? This is a really good one that you're gonna encounter a lot. Number one is what you gotta understand. It's, it's important to understand the psychology first before you start saying what you wanna say, right? If I'm a client and I think that the interest rates are gonna, you know, they're going up and the market's gonna crash and I've made up my mind, it's gonna be very hard for you to convince me otherwise by you just telling me. If you're just like, no, it's not, you know, I'm, I'm a realtor, this is what I do every day. And you know, it's gonna, it, it's not gonna crash. It's gonna, it's gonna slow down. It's gonna not appreciate as fast. Both of them are opinion, right? At the end of the day, it's your educated opinion. It's his opinion. It's really hard to change someone's mind, right? by just telling them. So if someone is like stuck in their way, stuck in their way, no, this is it, this is it, this is it, this is it. How would they realize that that is not it? Showing him proof. <laughs> Showing them, right? Progress. Data, right? And even then, that's not 100% guaranteed because some people are just stubborn, right? It's like, Hey, it's the sky's blue. No, the sky's red outside. The sky's red outside. The sky's red. And you're like, no, look, the sky's blue. Yeah, but there's a little bit of red right there. I see a little bit of red because the sun, right? Like some people 
are just not going to agree no matter what you do. So remember, you got to understand that too. But the best chance that you have, the best chance that you have to get someone to go from thinking one way to thinking a different way is to not disagree with them, to agree with them so that you're now their friend, right? Like get on the same team versus being a, on the opposite team. The minute I say that, hey, the market's going to go down and you tell me, no, it's not going to go down. You're now on the opposite team. Yeah. Just understand that from a psychological standpoint. So the best way to get around that is to say, hey, you know what, Alessandra, let's pretend Alessandra, you're, let's role play this, Alessandra. Um, tell me what the guy told you. Just pretend you're him. Uh, I want to make an offer on this house, but let's ask for 900 plus credit because the market has changed and the interest rates are just going to go up. So the purchase power of people is not the same anymore. Got it. So, so Alessandra, hey, that sounds like a, you know, I totally understand. That sounds like a possibility, right? That's an option. That's definitely an option, Alessandra. Um, I totally hear where you're coming from. So, if I'm understanding you correctly, Alessandra, you want to offer nine hundred thousand. This house is listed for one point one million. You want to offer nine hundred thousand, and you want to ask for a credit. Am I understanding you correctly? Yep, that's fine. <laughs> Hey, Alessandra, I want to tell you something like if we can get you that deal, I would be Superman to you, right? If I got you that deal, like I would be, you would probably bow down, right? Like I would love to get you that deal. Let me just tell you right off the bat. Like if I can get you the house for 900,000 and it's listed for 1.1, I'm on your side. Like why not get it for 600,000? <laughs> wait, 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 why are you laughing, Alessandra? Is that funny? um i mean if we can that would be great I'm, I'm trying i know that the houses in fremont are going for more than 1.1 that's, that's what you told me. okay <laughs> okay, was, okay but, so but i want a good deal okay so exactly so that's great that you said that so alessandra what at the end of the day i think what you really want is you just want to make sure you get the best deal possible is that right yes okay so I want to make sure we're on the same page, Alessandra, because if I'm going to be your realtor and I'm going to help you out, I need to understand where you're coming from, right? I'm on your team. My job is to get, make sure you get the best deal, make sure you get the best service, you know, make sure we negotiate for you. That's my job. That's why you're going to hire me. That's why you're working with me. And if I do that, then you're going to give me a five-star review and you're going to refer me to all your friends and family. But here's the thing. There's a way in which we got to go about that, right? Because you got to think about this, Alessandra. If, like, if I'm the seller and I have a house for 1.1 million and someone offers me 900,000, that's a big, that's a big drop. That's $200,000 drop. Alessandra, if you were the seller, would you take 900,000 and your house is listed for 1.1 million? Yeah, but the market has changed. So people are not getting what they're asking anymore. You're right. You're hundred percent right. People are not getting what they're asking. It's friendlier to the, to the buyers right now. In some circumstances, depending on the neighborhood where the schools are really good and stuff like that, some of the houses are still going, you know, selling pretty high, but you're right. In some areas, like there's more negotiating power. So why don't we do this? The best thing that we can do, Alessandra, is submit an offer that is competitive competitive enough so the seller knows that we're serious but not so low where they're just offended and they don't even want to respond to us right because if i submit an offer that's really low and then the seller gets offended they're not they're going to say hey you're not even serious like i'm not even going to respond to you or entertain you right so here's what we should do let's look at the comps right let's look at the data that's why i want to show you what's happening in the market so that we can make the best decision together so I'm going to pull up the data, you know, let's look at the comps, you know, the last home right down the street sold for, you know, a million 50. Here's one that sold for a million 75. Here's one that actually sold for 975. That's probably the lowest one. So if I were to take the average of those, of that data, it's probably around a million, a million 25. Yeah. You know? But this home does need work. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you're right. It does need a new roof. You're right. So let's figure that out together, right? So 
if we just looked at the average, right? A million, let's say a million dollars is kind of the average. He's listed at a 1.1. So he's definitely listed a little bit higher than the average, right? Would you, would you say, Alessandro? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, how much do you think it costs for a new roof? Uh, like around 20, 25. Okay, so if we're at a million and we deduct 25,000, now we're at 975. You see, so, but 900,000, that's 75,000 even more lower than what the average plus the work and all that stuff we got to do, right? So I understand we want to get the best deal. I want to get you the best deal. But I think if we come in at 900,000, I think we might scare the seller away and they, they don't even want to counter us. Why don't we maybe like start at 950? Because it's it's still a little lower than what we what we know the numbers are. We just did the numbers together, and it's not so low where it might offend them. And I think if you got it for nine fifty, you'd still be getting it fifty thousand less than what the average of all the other homes are selling for, which is which is a pretty good deal, don't you think? Yeah, but th that's my max. So let, let's do nine nine twenty. Okay, so here's the plan, right? Because there's two things that are going to happen. We're going to submit the offer at nine twenty. And I'm going to hope and I'm going to pray and I'm going to negotiate. And trust me, I'm going to go to the agent and I'm going to tell them why the houses are selling for less and why, you know, the roof needs to be changed. I'm going to fight for you, Alessandra. And two things are going to happen. We submit 925 or whatever it is. They're either going to say yes. If they say yes, then I'm your best friend. Now. Or they can say no, like, hey, we're not going to take you serious. So there's actually three things that can happen. We're not going to take you serious. Or the last one is, hey, we're going to negotiate. We're going to counter offer you. And when they counter offer us, hopefully they come down closer to what you want. And then we go from there and kind of see and, and see where we can end up. So we got to understand if we're going to get you the lowest price, we have to have a strategy in place. I don't just want to just throw wild numbers because I'm not doing a good job for you if I do that. I want to make sure we have a plan of how we're going to attack this and how we're going to get you the best price. Because that is what you want at the end of the day, right? You want the best deal possible. Yes. Okay. So do you think that's a good plan, Alessandra? Maybe we start 925, but I want you to already know you're probably going to get a counter offer. Okay. All right. Let's go ahead and move forward. Boom. Now we're writing the offer. That's how you handle that client. That's how you handle the client who wants to be really aggressive on the price who has unreal maybe maybe they're not completely unrealistic but they're pretty aggressive we're like all right it's probably a little more than what you're asking for now if the guy said like seven hundred thousand and you're just not even in the ballpark then they're just not serious right we want to deal with people who are actually serious but nine hundred thousand and the houses are listed for 1.1 but the comps are actually a million like it's lower but it's not that far off right like Remember, if you guys were buying the house yourself, what would you be doing? You'd be doing the same thing, right? If you were buying a house right now in this market, you would be doing the same exact thing. You'd be trying to get the best deal. So don't yeah. fight. Don't fight people when they're trying to get the best deal. Agree with them that hey, let's get you even lower if we can, but let's actually have some data and a strategy of how we're going to attack this. I think Enrique, really quick, just uh, I, I want to put in there some mindset, guys. I think, you know, Alessandra and not, not just Alessandra, but you guys have been showing property, been dealing with a lot of buyers and they're coming in with this thinking that they're going to get this huge discount. So what happens is we already have that mindset as an agent, like, here we go again. Here we go again. This, this guy wants to offer this ridiculously low price where we got to kind of settle back and use what Enrique said in the sense of put yourself in their shoes what they're hearing, what's going on in the market. So it's our job to have the patience and, and show them the data and walk them through the strategy. Yeah. One of our, one of our coaches before Dale, he just, all he did was coach on, on scripts. And I remember this to the T because he would always say this. It's something that stuck with me. He said, you have to follow the logic of the client. Well, what does it mean when I say follow the logic? Because they're it's hearing the other it's logic to them because they're hearing it from like friends, family, or I don't know. That's what I think. Yeah, it's, it's kind of that way, but it's more so is understand why they think that way. Follow how they got there. Like, how did they get to that decision that 900 was a good deal, right? 
So you got to understand where they're coming from. That's what more follow the logic means. Enrique, and I think uh, just to kind of add on to that, man, something like I've been doing is just, and we do it on our buyer console, right? But like, you know, tell me what you heard about the market, right? Like have that conversation. They're going to tell you. And then that's when you can start going into those like deeper questions. So then you really can understand. So I always call it like a seek to understand conversation, right? That way, it, it, the more that we listen, the more that we can find out, you know, we can prepare ourselves for that next kind of jab. I love that, bro. That's a that's a catchphrase we're going to coin now, right? Seek to understand conversation. So if you're having trouble getting people to connect with you or to agree with you, the first question you have to ask yourself is, are you seeking to understand them? Because when you seek to understand them, then that's going to reveal like the path that you got to take. So this, guys, this is higher level stuff. Like this is not like 101, right? This is like now like understanding psychology and mindset and stuff like that. But th these things are what are gonna make you a better salesperson. Because right now, remember, we're in a market where it's changing. So every freaking buyer and seller right now is like making up their own opinion of where the market's at based off what's happening in the news, what they see, what their friends say. You know, the price is being cut. There's more houses available. Everyone is forming their own logic, their own opinion. So what, like what Thomas said, are you having the seek to understand conversation? If you don't have that conversation, then you will not win their trust to be able to tell them what price to offer. Right? So it takes more work. It's going to take more work of having more conversation, more seeking to understand um carla said come from a place of curiosity like don't make anybody wrong because the minute you make someone wrong you start going like this you start butting heads and guys you can use this in your relationships too just fyi <laughs> this is some jedi shit right <laughs> like, but only use it for good when use it for bad to manipulate people right use it for good you use it to better understand the other person like hey like okay I'm not going to say you're right or wrong, but why do you think that way? Like, tell me, like, how did you get to that number? How'd you get to 900,000? Like, I want to make sure I understand. So we're, we're on the same team. I want to make sure I understand you so that I can help you get what you want. How did you get to 900,000? Because it needs new floors, new kitchen, new roof. It has a lot of cracks um, on the walls. Okay. So what would you say that costs? Alessandra to fix all that stuff like if, if you know let's a new roof maybe 25 like what, have you done the math like what do you think it would cost to fix all that that's gonna cost me I think around like 100k or hopefully probably even more who knows okay 100k uh okay so now I understand I understand why you're coming up with that number maybe you're seeing the price and then you're subtracting 100k and is that kind of how you got to that number yeah Okay, great. Like, it's good. It's good. We're talking about this because now I understand where you're coming from. Like, well, I want credit back because that's what I'm going to use to replace everything. All right. So we, let's get the seller to pay for it. Right. Like, why not? Let's see if we can do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So what do you guys stop notice? That. Okay. Let's stop the role play. What do you guys notice and how I'm talking to it? You're agreeing with everything. You're, you're agreeing with what she's saying. Yeah. Agreeing, right? I didn't make her wrong at all. I didn't make her right, though. Like, I didn't say, like, yeah, you're right. Like, you should. Like, I just approved. I just, like, you know, uh, repeated and approved. It kept it very neutral, right? Like, hey, like, yeah, I understand. Like, shoot. Like, yeah, it's worth, it's an option. Anytime, here's a, here's a little trick. I want you to write this down. That's an option. This is something you can use. Anytime somebody says something, you can say, hey, like that's an option. That doesn't mean it's right. That doesn't mean that's the right option. That doesn't mean that's the option you're gonna go with. That doesn't mean that's what you recommend. But when you say that's an, hey, that's an option, like you're just saying that's one way you can try to do it. I'm not saying it's right or wrong. So anytime someone says something and I know it's wrong, like, or I don't agree with it, instead of saying, nah, you're wrong, Hey man, that's an option, you know, like, let's figure that out together. Let's see if that, you know, makes the most sense. So remember, like now that you're understanding like this sort of like logic 
based conversation and following the logic and understanding the mindset, you can now use this on any objection. That's what I want you to take away. You can use this on any objection now going forward. It's the same process. Understand the logic, walk them through it, ask them more questions, figure out why they think that way, right? Break it down for them. Make sure you understand what they're saying. Make sure they understand you. Let them know you're on their team. And then say, hey, this is what I recommend. This is how I would go about that. Like, I understand what you want. Let's, and my job is to try to get you the best deal, try to get you what you want. This is how I would go about doing that. Alessandra, was that helpful for you? Yes, it was. I'm going to use it. I'm going to call him right now after. <laughs> okay, so here's what we're all about. We're all about immediate implementation. So now we're going to reverse the role play, right? Okay. And it's not going to be perfect, but just follow my logic, right? Just follow the logic and ask questions and just make sure that we understand each other and make sure I know you're on my team, you're on the same page, right? Um, yeah, Alessandra, you know, I, I want to offer 900,000 on this house, you know, oh. it's, it, it needs work and, you know, the interest rates are going up and, you know, prices, houses are sitting on the market and, you know, I want to, I want to offer 900,000. Okay. Yeah. I agree with you. Um, uh, what we can do is, uh, we can sit down and assume and then go over the comparables just so we can, um, get a feel of what the homes are selling for. Okay, let's stop there. So Alessandra, before you, before you give the solution, I want you to be more curious about how I got to that, okay. right? So ask me more questions about like how I came up with 900. Make sure that I know that you understand me, that we're on the same page. Because right now what you did is you said you went straight to the solution, right? But remember, it's, it's the seek to understand. So I want you to say, hey, Enrique, I, I understand you know, hey, I hear you, 900,000. Let me understand a little bit more about, and then, you know, go from there. All right, so Alessandra, yeah, I only want to offer 900,000 on this house. It needs some work. It's been on the market for 30 days. And yeah, I probably wouldn't pay more than 900 for this. Okay, yeah, I understand, Enrique. Um, how did you come up with the 900? Well, you know, it's just, uh, it's, it's listed for a 1.1 million. In, I got to do the roof. It has a crack in the foundation. It needs new windows. It needs new paint. Like there's it's a lot of work, you know? So I'm just figuring like, I'm going to have to put that amount of work in. So it's not worth that much to what it's listed for. I agree with you. Um, well, let's, how about this? Let's go over like, so new roof, it's around 20, 25 K. Let's just put 25 K. We can, what we can do is subtract, um, the uh, repairs and then just offer that amount. How, how do you feel about that? Yeah, I mean, yeah, definitely. I don't want to pay what what's listed for. No, I wouldn't either. I agree with you. Okay. So Alessandra, I think the key thing, I know I'm putting you on the spot and I know, I know, um, I know you get shy in front of people when you're on the spot. And I know when you talk to someone personally, you're probably going to say a lot more. But I would encourage you to, like right now, like uh, the amount of questions you're asking, you asked me like a couple questions. I would go further, dig deeper, like really seek to understand like, well, hey, how did you come up with that number, right? Like at the end of the day, what is it that you really want, right? Like I would go like three or four layers deep instead of just staying on the surface. That's, that's the biggest advice I can give you. Okay, yeah. Ask questions about my answers. So if I give you an answer, ask another question about that. If I give you another answer, ask another question about that. And then once, and then repeat it all back to me, right? Okay, so what I'm hearing you say is this. Are we on the same page? Do I understand you? Okay. Who would like to role play that with me right now? This should, we'll give someone else an opportunity. I can try. Let's go, Diana. Okay, Diana, so the same exact thing, right? You're following up, you're trying to understand my logic, you're asking more questions. Diana, yeah, I, you know, 
this house might be a good fit, but I only want to offer 900,000. I mean, these are a lot of work and like the rates went up and, you know, I think the prices are going to go down. So I only want to offer 900,000. Yeah, definitely. That makes sense. Okay. 900,000. That would be an option. So where did you get that number? Well, I'm just seeing it's listed for 1.1. Um, you know, I need to do the roof. It needs to be painted. It needs to do carpet. Like it needs a lot of work. So I'm just figuring I'm going to have to put all this work into it. Um, you know, so I'm kind of just doing, subtracting it from the price, you know, and I, I think 1.1 is still a little too high. I think it's probably worth a little less. Well, then, yeah, we should get together and we should take a look at the disclosures and see what work needs to be done and kind of get an estimate of what that cost would be. But we also want to take a look at what the buyers are willing to pay for a house like this. Am I hearing you say that you want to get a good deal? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I want to get a, a good deal. And you're yeah. open to a home that needs some work. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so there is opportunity out there. There's some properties out there that are not turnkey and we can negotiate based on what work needs to be done. For this property, you wanna set some time aside and we can just take a look at the disclosures and see what work needs to be done and kind of put a number on that, look at what a buyer is willing to pay and then just decide what offer we wanna make at that time. Yeah, that sounds good. All right, cool. Good. Yeah. Okay, guys, so. What I want you to take away is she didn't say it exactly how I said it, right? But the gist of the conversation, the key fundamentals that she didn't make me wrong, she agreed, she understood, and then she like reaffirmed like, hey, so it sounds like you want to get a good deal. Is that correct? Right? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, that's, that's correct. Okay, great. Well, let's meet. Let's look at the numbers. There are homes out there. Let's see what we should come up with on this property. And then from there, it wasn't like, we weren't clashing, right? So she said it in her own words, but it was the exact format and she followed my logic. That's the takeaway right there. Who has questions on this? Or who else wants to role play? It? This is our chance to role play and practice this. Go, oh, Carla. Uh, I'll be... I'll be the, um, I'll be the client. You're the that's client? Okay. Sure. No, that's I got to be the client. That, that's, that's, uh, that's an option. <laughs> I got to be the client. <laughs> that's an option. That's not an option. That's an option. <laughs> but, but for you to get the most uh, learning out of this, you have to be the agent, right? So Carla, yeah, you know, um, I only want to offer 900000 on this house. I mean, the rates are going up. This house needs work. You know, the area is good, but the house needs a lot of work. And like, I think the prices are going to go down still. So I only want to offer 900. But I'm trying to, I was out for like 10 minutes. <laughs> Wait, this is the, so this is the 1.1 in Fremont that Alessandra was going at earlier. Yeah. And I want to offer 900, you know. Walk me through that, Enrique. Uh, what do you feel about the market lately? Well, I just see that rates are, you know, rates have gone up and there's a lot more homes and I see a lot of prices being reduced and I think it might go down a little bit more, you know, so I don't want to pay, you know, top dollar for a home right now if it's going to drop even more. And this house needs some work too. Okay. Walk me through that. When you mentioned that there's a lot of price reductions, have you seen any online that a lot of properties are doing price reductions? Yeah, I've seen some. I've been looking on Zillow and stuff, and I've seen like some homes are sitting on the market a little longer, and then they're reducing the price. And then, you know, so yeah, I, I want to make sure I'm not paying, you know, more than I should right now. Okay. By any chance, do you have those addresses handy? No, I don't. Yeah, I don't remember off the top of my head. It's just as, as I've been, I'm on like a bunch of alerts. So I'm getting emails all the time. Got it. Okay. So when we visited this property yesterday, the property was listed about 1.1. If I understand you correctly, you wanted to offer about 900K. Yeah. Okay, that's a big jump, but walk me through that. Why do you um, feel that 900 is gonna be a sweet spot for the seller? Um, I mean, it just needs work. It needs a roof, it needs paint. You know, the kitchen's old. So it's probably gonna cost me like at least 100,000 or 150,000 to, you know, get it remodeled. So okay. you know, I want to make sure I, I, I factor that into my, my price. Got it. Okay. So 
you and I are on the same page. I am 100% on your team. And whatever you decide to go, I 100% support you. And for me, I want to make sure I get you the best deal. And you and I have this conversation when I did your buyer consult. You want to make sure the property that you're moving into is something that you like. And at the same time, going to be the best deal, right? Yeah. Got it. Okay. So if the property is listed about 1.1, are you, do you have a quick minute to go over comps and comparables in the area? Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Then go comps, whatever, whatever, whatever. Okay. So walk me through the cost, how you got about 150. Do you have any kind of ballpark on what the roof is going to cost? Um, I've just kind of just did some rough, rough math, you know, like 25 K probably for the roof. Uh, I know when I remodeled another house before, it was like cost like a hundred thousand to do everything. So I'm I'm just kind of figuring somewhere in that ballpark. Okay, well let's do this together. Let's see from one point one. Let's go over and let's try. We should base ballpark on the renovation. What we're gonna do? So let's list five things. What are the five deal breakers of the home currently that you want to get? you know you want to get rid of so let's start with the roof what other four yeah. things on the property that you want to negotiate with the seller uh the kitchen i mean it's old right it's like it's never been remodeled that's probably going to cost at least another twenty five thousand. um the paint right like they haven't done anything it's a super original like fixer upper so paint carpet uh needs some landscape like it, it needs a lot of work i mean which is i'm willing to do it but i don't want to pay full price if I'm going to do all that work. Got it. Got it. Okay. I, if I were in your shoes too, I would feel the same way. If I put a bid for 1.1, I would feel that the property has to be in good shape. Would you agree? Yeah. Got it. Okay. So if I understand you correctly, you want to bid about 900 based on the fact those five deal breakers on the property, correct? Yeah. Got it. Okay. So let's do this. Let's create some scenarios together. We'll do option one and option two and see what you can come up with. Sounds that, is that fair enough for you? If I could go over option one, option two, and you got, you and I can strategize on what would be the best price for the seller. Yeah, definitely. Okay, let's stop right there. Um, good stuff. So what do you guys notice? Put in the comments, what do you guys notice about Carla? Did she seem Nothing. real comfortable? <laughs> Did she seem comfortable having this conversation? Yeah, she's been there before. Yeah, right. Yeah, so I'm doing it right now. I'm doing it right now. <laughs> Guys, I think I think too the thing, like the other thing too, is like how much do we know about that property and the comparable sales and like what's recently selling? Like anytime like we're gonna put a an offer on our home, like I'm calling these recently sold to see like where did they land at for appraisal, right? Like what information are they sharing? Sometimes I'll, I'll do that in front of my client. So we find a property that recently sold, like, hey, we're going to call that buyer's agent and see, hey, where'd you guys land for appraisal, right? A lot of times they're willing to give us that information and our clients are right there. Sometimes like a lot of these homes are listed and they're even price reduct, like price reductions. There's a good opportunity where these homes are going to appraise 100, 200, maybe even $300,000 over, depending on what's recently selling. Um, you know, I, I think that's also something to look at too when we're, when we're talking to our clients. Yep. But I think the key I think thing like for go, go ahead, ahead, go ahead, Carla. Because I think that I mean I stepped out for about 10 minutes, so I missed the part that at 1.1, but from where we stand earlier, what I'm understanding you first is that right away you sounded like, okay, you I want 900 the best deal possible. I'm not I'm not willing to pay 1.1. Hell no. So give me you're you're facing a, a client that's like I want everything paid by the seller. I want everything on my price, everything on my terms, because I don't know what I'm doing. And I ask you, what's your cost on each five items? And you said roof. You said this and this and this. And you psychologically, you realize in yourself, like shit, I actually don't know what I'm talking about because <laughs> I don't know the cost of the roof. I don't know the cost of the kitchen. I'm just spitting up balls here. So I'm okay. I you made you made me think that your cost is 150. But based on my experience, it's not going to be 150. What if we meet in the middle to make the seller happy and you happy so you guys can be win-win situation? And I get where you're going now. So from the comment from Brenda, she now, she now wants to go option one, option two. And I used two phrases. I'm not sure if you guys caught that. Is it fair enough? And also, uh, let's strategize together and you tell me what's going to be the best um, option for you. 
for them yeah. psychologically, not for me. Yeah. And what stands out to me, Carla, is you took the position, you positioned yourself as an advisor, not a salesperson, right? Yeah. And that I want you guys to really understand that, right? She, the way she asked questions was almost like a counselor or like a, a therapist. Like, how'd you get at that, right? Like, let me understand you, right? Like, right, like a consultant. It wasn't like, no, I'm going to close you. Like, no, this is like using some fancy closing technique, right? Or like just to convince you. She wasn't convincing me at all. She was walking me through the conversation to start getting me to like realize and put my guard down. Because at first I was like, 900,000, the market yeah. sucks, right? And then after she started walking me through that, then I was like, well, yeah, you know, just, you know, and then I would like immediately it kind of, it dropped, right? And she did it in like a smooth, nonchalant, like it didn't seem like she really <laughs> cared. Like she cared if I closed the deal or not. Like she wanted to earn the business, but it wasn't going to sweat her. Like, hey, I'm here to do what's going to be best for you, right? We're on the same team. And I think I sometimes think, um, clients I like need to you, do that. I like how you said that you pointed out that it's very calming because I've learned the past buyer consult that you want to mirror your client. Like that's all that is. It's just don't be combative. If you know the answer, ask more because sometimes the answer that you're thinking is not going to be the answer for them. It's always going to be for them. And it's always going to be their comfortability in what's efficient for them. So if you come in and let's ask them like, I want 900,000 right away. And you sound like, no, it's not going to happen. I'm like, you're already shutting off the possibility for them to realize their mistakes. And that's what I enjoy the most. It's just like, you say all these things at the end of the day, here's are the facts though, sis. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I hope that's helpful for everyone. Yeah, really helpful. Good job, Carla. Good stuff. I mean, and, that, and that, that's also why Carla closes a lot of sales, right? I can tell you right now, not only is she a hard worker, but she has really, really studied and practiced how to communicate with people in a way that positions her as, you know, a consultant, as an authority, as someone that they should listen to and not someone that it's like me against you, right? So what I want you guys to understand is like, think of this as a game, right? Like we're playing the game of how do I get better at talking to people? Right. So when you're out there talking to people, like start trying these things. Right. Because what you don't want to do is you hear all this great stuff. We're throwing up the, the clapping sign. We're saying it's inspiring. And then we get on the phone and we go back to what we're used to. Then you didn't do anything. You didn't learn anything. This was all a waste. So I want you to go back now on the phone and start like trying to, you know, talk to people in this manner. Like, hey, walk me through that. How did you come up with that? What have you heard about the market? That's interesting, All right? She's, Carla says, frame the conversation, ask deeper questions, then strategize. And even when you say the words like, hey guys, I'm on your team, let's come up with the best strategy together. Also, Go ahead. In the industry that they, they have this famous line. I've been in the business 20, 20 years or I've been in the business 40 years, you know, and they, they know everything. But at the end of the day, what it all comes down to is one agent skill is they listen and you hear them. That's all that is. So if you learn how to listen and you learn how to ask the question with the proper tone, with the proper questions and how to frame it on a positive note, they'll trust you more. They're like, oh shit. Carla's better because even though she's younger, I would just go for her because she under, she heard me. She listened and she heard me. And so the other agent who's been experienced gave me all the solution, but she didn't hear me. So that happened to me last week. So <laughs> I want a client. So let's go. There you go. Uh, Jason, can you take over now and role play with a couple people to, for the end? Yeah. Yeah, I got it. I got it, Rika. Hey, guys. One other thing that I wanted to point out was was just the, the approach that Carla said. It's, you know, if I had a client and they're said, they said that they're willing to make an offer on something, even though it's a low offer, this is an opportunity to get, to get ink to paper, right? So again, don't take like, oh shit, man. I got another one of them buyers that want to go ahead and look, write this low ass offer. That's, a, that's the wrong attitude to take, right? It's like, 
you know what? This is what I want you guys to do is mentally prepare yourself that this is the market we're in, guys. This is it. You're not going to get the client that says, oh, it's listed at 1.1. I want to offer 1.2. That's not going to happen, right? You're going to get the offers of, hey, listen, it's listed at 1.1. I'm going to get the, 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 the they want to offer 850, 900. So let's just prepare for that, right? And, and let's embrace it. Let's get ready for that. And, and not be like, oh, here we go again. One of these low ball offers, right? Who, who does that? Guys, honestly, raise your hand if it's like, oh, shit, here we go again. We got another low ball offer. Raise your hand if, that, if, there's, if, if that's the attitude you're taking sometimes. Be honest. Nobody? No, okay, there we go. There we go. Thank you, guys, right? Because, again, I think it's, it's huge in mindset to say, hey, listen, we're very fortunate. We're very blessed to be in this scenario where we have a client that we showed a property to that is willing to write an offer, but now we just got to walk them through the process, walk them through the logic of making them understand what's a winning offer and what's an offer that makes sense for both parties, right? So I think that's a huge, huge mind shift that I need us to all focus on because going forward in this market in the next few months, it's not going to change, guys. You're not going to get buyers that are willing to pay up more and above. It's going to be that opposite. So that's why it's it's really important for us to go ahead and role play these scenarios, the true scenarios of what you're going to run into. Okay. So again, I kind of just wanted to add that in there because I, I really like what Carla said, like, we really know that's going to happen. We already, we already expect these buyers to, to go ahead and want to offer less. So why fight it? Why, why not just sharpen our skill to walk them down that, that road of logic, right? Let's go, guys. Let's get someone else to go ahead and jump on here. Who, who's, who's ready to do it? Who wants to be the client? I'll be Everybody the client. Wants to be the client. I'll be the client. I'll be the client. All right, Carla's <laughs> the client. Who's the agent? Who's ready? Lily, you ready? I'll be, I'll be nice. <laughs> sure, I'll give it a try. Sure. <laughs> mind that I, I'm gonna cough a lot just because that's what I'm doing a lot right now. So. We got you, we got you, Lily. Um, again, yeah, let, let's run that. Because again, guys, we're, we're gonna be running into this. this. This is a common theme right now. So let, let's, let's start getting good at it. Let's go, Lily. Okay. Uh, it's the same scenario. Yeah, or or do you have a scenario that, you, that you're running into right now with with the, with the buyer? <laughs> no, basically the same thing. I've been having. Well, let's a lot practice. Of people... Let's practice this one out. Yeah, so do the same one then. Same one. Go. You want me to go first? Yeah. Uh, sure. Okay. You know, Lily, I appreciate your time. I really love the property that we saw yesterday, but I honestly, it's pretty too steep for us for one point one. I want to offer at nine hundred. Nothing more. Nothing less. No, I mean, I, I definitely understand. Um, I mean, I was there. The property was gorgeous. Um, what was it that you liked about it? Um, the lot size is great. Um, the great room is great. Um, but at the same time, I don't think it's going to be a good fit for us because there's a lot of renovation in the property. And I don't think it's worth our time to even put, uh, put an offer higher than 900. Not higher than 900. Okay. Um, I mean, I definitely understand that. I mean, if I were you, I wouldn't pay 1.1 for it either, especially taking into, into consideration the fact that it needs some work. Um, but walk me through it. How did you come up with uh, 900? Um, because my neighbor, my neighbor <laughs> did the renovations on the property and it was also a fixer. And I heard, you know, it's going to be about a hundred grand on renovations I don't have a hundred grand I only have 20,000 on cost to renovate the property right definitely I mean <coughs> you know <coughs> renovations can tend to, I'm I have I've been having to call forever um sorry that threw me off um no I mean definitely I mean you know you're right renovations could be pretty costly um it, and it really does just depend I mean what do you think that this home needs if you were to walk into it what would you need to do right off the bat um, I think from head to toe, from paint to carpet to kitchen, basically it's ugly. <laughs> you know, you're right. It, it is a little ugly, but it also does have the, the, the strong points. Like it has that huge backyard that you loved. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. It's, um, this is going to keep throwing me off. Um, 
no, yeah, definitely. I mean, you know, renovation does kind of, um, you know, cost a while a little bit. So you, you mentioned that it's ugly. What particular things do you think that you need to do right off the bat to make it prettier? Um, I would say the kitchen has to be remodeled immediately. The kitchen, uh, okay. Mm -hmm. At the same time, you know, we use the, we use the kitchen a lot. <laughs> so that's going to be the very first thing that we have to renovate. Um, the carpet wise, I think we, we can deal with it, but it's going to be in a very bad condition. Um, at the okay. same time, the front yard and backyard needs to be redone. We love landscaping. So that's going to okay. be something that will yeah. make it pretty. Definitely. So from what I'm hearing, there's just two main concerns. Um, the, the carpet, you said it's ugly, but you don't have to do it right, right away. Uh, you mentioned the kitchen and um, the, the landscaping, correct? Yes. Um, just because, you know, your neighbor did this and it seems like you have some experience. What do you think the kitchen would cost you? Um, about, well, he, I scouted some vendors prior to looking at properties and they gave me a quote just in case it's footage wise. It's going to cost between like 15 to 25K. Okay, let's just, let's just, let's just hypothetically, let's say it's cost 25K. That's 25K. Um, what about the, the front and the backyard? How much do you think that'll run you for? Um, so my rental right now for landscaping and everything, it's going to cost us between, uh, for that, it's going to be 10 grand. Okay. So what you just told me, it's about 35,000, correct? That you yes. would have to do right off the bat. And I'm with you. I mean, in this market, I want to make sure that I get you the best deal. Cause honestly, I am on your side. Um, cause I wouldn't just, if I were you, I wouldn't be doing the same thing, but you know, we're all, we are at 1.1. We're offering 900,000. The house does need a lot of work. I recognize that you recognize that. And I'm pretty sure the seller recognizes that as well. Um, but we just went around $35,000. Um, do you think that it would be fair for us to ask the seller for, uh, you know, to, re to reduce that price, the $35,000? Yes, because I heard it's a buyer's market now. It's definitely a buyer's market. Um, so we are able to possibly negotiate. Yeah, let's try to get you a good deal. Um, but you mentioned um, about 35,000. Would you be, would you feel comfortable um, um, offering $35,000 less? Uh, no, I think my max would be around, would be 935. 935. I mean, if I'm being honest, that's a, that's a start. Um, you know, let's start off at 935 and, um, We'll go from there. Uh, another thing that I would suggest, let's have that number of 135 in mind because we do need to account for all of the renovations that I want to make sure that you have some extra money for. Um, let's get together and look at the comparable so we can see what other, other buyers are willing to pay in the area. And let's see if that's kind of in line with what's happening in the market. That way we can get you a really good deal. Got it. Okay. So we offer 935 and <laughs> can we add the 35,000 for a seller credit? Yeah, let's let you know what let's look at it. It's definitely an option. Um, let's keep that number of, of 935 in mind. But let's look at what's happening in the market. So we can see if realistically, it's something that we can do. You know, I want to get you a good deal. I'd love to get you a good deal. I want to get you a good deal. That way you can refer me to all your friends and family. So I'm again, I'm definitely on your side. But at the same time, I don't want to offend the sellers. I do want to get you a good deal. But let's look at what's happening in the market. Let's keep that 935 in mind. And let's see if that's something realistic that way we can get you that home great let's put it in <laughs> perfect uh, yeah and want maybe water <laughs> yeah i'm good i have some <clears throat> awesome. thank you thank you lily thank you carla really really good stuff good job good job lily and thank yeah you. for, for you being with that calm good job though awesome job carla give us some feedback what do you think maybe are you open to open to feedback yeah. Oh, yeah. Sorry. I was on mute. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> um, I love the fact that you said that we're on the same team. That mm -hmm. I'll probably start there. Um, another option too that I love <laughs> is that you listen to what I'm saying, mm -hmm. and you you made it to a point like, okay, let's just see. Nine thirty five is going to be a good option first, and let's play with the seller to start. And I love those two things actually, and I think maybe two things to get improved on, um, I think would be get to know me a little bit more. I think it was more just transactional than relationship-ish. It was more so like, why do you feel that 900 is a good number? And I gave you a, a fish to catch earlier that I love the kitchen. So that that's actually my sweet spot. So for me, if a client tells me, I actually, the first thing that I have to change the kitchen, that's a green light for me. Like, okay, 
if I could negotiate the seller for you to get this credit for your kitchen and you would say yes to this property, <laughs> that's going to be a green light for me. And another sweet spot for me when I mentioned earlier that I cook a lot and I love the kitchen. So that's going to be your main frame of negotiations there because that's my sweet spot. Mm -hmm. And you didn't go too much in detail about it. So I wish that I was like, okay, tell me why, based on the buyer consult already, like tell me a little bit more. What would you think the kitchen would look like if that's the case? Would right. you consider using white cabinets and stuff like that? Because for me, if a client tells me those things, it's a good tool for me to negotiate with the listing agent. Like, hey, you're, this is what she likes to do, <laughs> more framework. But overall, I think you did a pretty good job. I think you, you listen and you heard what I'm saying. And I feel like we, I, I came across like, okay, if 900 is not going to be a good fit, let me try to go 935. That was the goal to increase, right? But I wasn't, I, I mean, didn't mean to be tough, but I mean. <laughs> no, it's okay. I didn't, part of, I didn't hear a lot what you were saying because I was coughing, but um, thank you. <coughs> yeah, she did pretty good. She did pretty good. But yeah, open to feedback as clients as well. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, no, really, really good job. Both of you guys, and let me know, no, really good job of that. You know, one thing I, I like is I really like the energy that Lily had, I mean, I think that she really brought the energy, even though she had her cough, but she still just sounded, you know, really interested. Um, and, and a good takeaway from, from the, from the feedback was, was what Carla was saying. I've never even thought of that. It's like just honing in on that kitchen, right? Again, I, I didn't even catch that where it's like now, Hey, if I'm able to get this from the seller in regards to the kitchen, then it would make sense for you. Right. So again, I, I think that that that's a huge, huge takeaway because again, a lot of times, or for myself, I'm just honed in on the price, right? I'm honed in on the price, which which I think a lot of us are until Carla kind of exposed that. So like, okay, cool, price is definitely important, but then now let's let's hone in on what what, what Carla wants, which was a kitchen. So if I can magically get this kitchen or get a credit for this kitchen, that'll satisfy that that side of it. Yeah. So I really I really like that feedback. Yeah, I, I like that feedback too. I think you're right. I think sometimes we have to um, kind of pick up on those cues and because, you know, home buying is really emotional sometimes. And if you can catch that, a lot of people associate like kitchens with like families <coughs> and like get togethers and stuff like that. So that's a really good one. <laughs> Thank you. So when she also, said, also too, um, go ahead, go ahead. I was going to ask you a question. So when she said about the kitchen, what you would have been like, oh, I, um, to the agent, you would have told her like, my client loves the kitchen, like, or what? I would, so the conversation that hopefully could have transpired was like, when I told, you know, Lily is like, you know, any, everything else about the house I can deal with, the kitchen is going to be my main priority. So for me, I can ask you like, okay, tell me a little bit more about that. What about the kitchen that you saw yesterday that doesn't fit to your standards? Give me five things. You always want to put the client an option to give you five things, either three things, five things. Because if you left it in an open, you know, open question, you're like, oh, I don't know, I love white cabinets, I love great things, you know? But for them, if you, if a client tells you, I want this, I want that, I want this, gold, to me, it's gold because it's not coming from my mouth, it's coming from the client's mouth. So I can come back to it like, hey, the seller actually agreed for a seller credit for your kitchen remodel because you told me these things are going to be important. So let's just say out of the five things, we got everything right. Are you okay moving to the property that the landscaping is not done? The backyard is not done or the bedroom needs new carpet. Do you think that's going to be a deal breaker for you? And they'll be like, oh shit, that's true. I gave you five things that's important to me and you got it right. You know what? Okay, let's do it. Let's just do that. Get the seller credit and just move on. I can deal with the rest later. It's a 50-50, I would say. Okay, makes sense. I like that. I think a big takeaway for me on this is that we're not just negotiating price, guys. There's more than than the than the number that's involved here, and that's what Carla was able to expose for us. What else? Any any other feedback? Anything else, guys? Go ahead, Lisa. I liked how I liked everything, but uh, I liked how Lily at the end she just kept on standing very firm in her let's try this 935 let's try this let's look at the comparables i feel like the client was trying to i guess um own the conversation over and i really do like how lily stood firm in that and she, the client finally did accept and um just keeping lily in charge of that i noticed yeah i think lisa got that one because 
when you mirror the client, whoever speaks first loses the game. Like, tell me, I ask the questions, you tell me. So in the conversation, I, I like psychology, maybe just the background. I love psychology. I love how people put into words based on how they phrase it and how they actually start the conversation. So it's all about tone. It's all about the delivery. And for me, it's how the conversation actually is. The first half of me in this conversation, I was dominating around the conversation. And if you notice, I backed off a little bit and just like, okay, I stayed quiet. So I like that you picked on it. It's really good for buyer consult because if the client speaks a lot and you don't hear them, you're doing everything right. But if you speak more than the conversations, you're doing everything wrong. But I like that, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Carla, since you mentioned that you like psychology, um, I'm just going to throw this out there. Would you be down or open to doing like a class on it? Because I think that would be really really helpful for everybody like I think I'll be down I mean I, I'll be open I'll be open to yeah. that I took, I took communications degree so it's I think it's for me it was really helpful understanding body language and how the delivery of the tonality I think I'll, I'll be down for that I mean just tell me what you guys are lacking and what improvements you guys are going to go forward with and maybe you and I can have a class for everybody I'm down for that yeah definitely I love it, I love Jason, it. can we do that <laughs> oh yeah no definitely definitely I love it guys Hey guys, thank you guys again. We're, we're coming up to, to the 12.30. Anything else you guys need to add? Any, any other questions you guys have? Um, let me know. What, before I let you guys go, I, I just really, for me, it's a real big takeaway to embrace that this conversation is going to happen. Embrace that this is what, this is what we're walking into. This is what's in the market right now. So instead of fighting it, instead of being, oh my God, this is happening again, embrace it and prepare yourselves with this role play and not just within this, this hour we have here, take it with each other role play this scenario because it is going to come up again, right? Uh, but again, anything else before we leave, guys? Any questions? Any Good. Thank you, guys. And do me one favor, guys. In the chat today, in the general chat, can you just write one takeaway that you got from today's script training? Please, just throw it in there. Some, some people weren't able to attend. But if you can throw that in there, that'll benefit the whole team. I appreciate it, guys. Thank you, Enrique. Thanks, guys.